today we're in a company called B&M Eloksiranje. Eloksiranje is a Slovenian word for anodizing. So what we'll do in this episode is we'll breed some color into this case and we're gonna turn it royal blue. What we've done in the previous episode, which I didn't show you, is we've actually created or made two cases. And one, we've actually, I've left it with the owner here because what they did off camera, the other case was sandblasted, which will result in two different surface treatments or final looks. This one is basically straight out of the CNC machine and the other one was sandblasted and you'll get to see the difference in the end. So, let's breathe some color into this, shall we? By far the most labor-intensive part of the anodizing process is preparing the hangers. Uh, the hangers do exactly what it says on the tin. You use them to hang aluminum parts onto them in order to dip them in a sequence of different chemicals in order to anodize the part. What you have to be careful here is that the contact surface between the aluminum part and the hanger is as small as possible because the contact point usually does not get anodized. So we usually hang them by thread holes or different kind of holes that will not be visible in the end product because there's no color there, but it's hidden so the end customer doesn't even notice. Once the frame with the hanger on which our pieces are secured is ready, a special arm picks it up and drops it into the first solution, which is a degreaser. As you might imagine, it does exactly that. It removes oils that the aluminum got through machining and handling. Next, we rinse it in water to wash off that solution so that it's ready for etching, which is done in two steps one in high pH solution and one in low. The primary purpose of etching is to remove any natural oxide on the surface of aluminum, but if etched long enough, we could also use it to remove minor scratches. After etching, we rinse the aluminum again before it goes what is called a desmuting bath. This step makes sure that no impurities left over by the etching process are left on the surface of the aluminum. Finally, we get to the actual anodizing process, the result of which is a thin surface layer, which we often call an odic layer or an odic film. This film is several micrometers thick porous layer of aluminum oxide, which is highly porous and highly sensitive to absorbing color pigments. Which is why coloring is the very next step. Hey, Editor Tomasz here. About uh, 14 days later, after recording the original video in the workshop, and I'm interrupting this video to explain three things. The first one is, oh, by the way, I got this black notebook from a friend of mine. Looks pretty cool, so I'm giving it a try. Uh, anyway, uh, where was I? Okay, so yes. First, um, I can't show you the coloring process of the video because the company asked me not to show it, uh, being somewhat of a trade secret and all. Uh, however, you're not really missing much because it's just another bath with another liquid that has dye inside. And they basically dip the parts into that liquid, which is uh, at 90 degrees centigrade. So it's quite hot. And the longer you leave the parts in it, the more intense the color gets. Uh, now, obviously, for my royal blue, I wanted it really intense, so we left it inside for another 15 minutes. That's the first part. Now, the second one. Uh, you should totally check out the website for my keyboard. Yes, the router is not the only project I'm working on, so make sure to visit the link in the description below. Uh, the keyboard is also called Mono, and I'm actually this close to having the logo trademarked, which makes me super happy and you'll see more of it on variant on various projects in the future. And now the third, maybe the most important part. A lot of you have reached out to me about how you can actually buy this case slash router and the reality is you cannot yet uh, because I'm still missing a couple of parts namely there's no feet there's no uh, PCB with LEDs there's no buttons 
That being said, all of those parts are being actively worked on and it will be ready and done. I'm expecting sometime towards the end of the northern summer. In the meanwhile, if you're interested in buying this product once it's released, please fill out the interest check form down below. This will help me immensely to see what kind of product you want this to be, what kind of specification, maybe different colors, maybe different sizes. All the decisions from now on will be based on the feedback that you leave in this form. So again, please scroll down. You can do it now as well. Scroll down, click the form, fill it out, then come back and continue with this video. Now that we've cleared things up, Let's go back to the workshop. To make sure the color doesn't leach out or fade over time, we need to seal the surface, which is done in the final two steps, cold sealing and hot sealing. And with sealing done, the aluminum part can be considered complete and can be either packaged for shipping or assembled into a larger final product. Anodization complete. I'm very happy with how the router or the case turned out. Uh, the color itself is called Royal Blue and I must say it does look royal. Out of the two, I prefer this one which is the sandblasted finish because you can't see the cut marks and it's a bit more matte as opposed to being shiny and I kind of prefer this look. So, in the next episode what we're gonna do is we're gonna either manufacture the feet or create a bracket for the three 40 millimeter fans that are coming inside. Depends on which company will be available first. So make sure you're subscribed because at the end of this series, I will give this router to one of the subscribers of the channel. So again, make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you in the next one.